The PlayStation 5 has been a pretty big success for Sony so far. I mean, boasting millions of units sold, it has a lasting high demand, but what are the games that really show you what this machine is capable of? What are the must-play games of the PS5 right now? Well, in this video, we're going to go over what I think are the, are the 15 absolute best games available for the PlayStation 5 as of August 2022. Now, for this list, we will be looking at games that were either officially released on the PS5 or they got a special next-gen patch to really take advantage of the power of the hardware. This is not just going to be a list of PS4 games that you can play via backwards compatibility. So... Be sure to let me know which of these games you've gotten the most enjoyment out of. Drop a like, and if you're interested in winning a PS5, go check out the Chaos Comics channel. We're giving away a PS5 and multiple comic books over there. The link is at the top of the description. Make sure you're subscribed. Now, let's start off with an easy one. God of War. I know, I said we weren't going to be talking about PS4 games, but in this case, it deserves to be on the list because of a hefty PS5 patch it got last year. Now, the game originally launched in 2018. It was a massive overhaul of the franchise's established tone, and it boasted a much more serious and dramatic tone instead of the over-the-top and kind of ridiculous manner. Story? Excellent. New gameplay? Top-notch, and the graphics were beautiful. On February 2nd of 2021, God of War got a huge patch for PS5 players that added 60 FPS support as well as 4K resolution and 2160p resolution options. God of War on the PS5 is beautiful. It's a great way to introduce this new world uh, to the gaming world because the sequel's almost here and it's going to be insane. Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Opinions are mixed on the new RPG style of gameplay for the Assassin's Creed franchise, but Valhalla may be one of my favorite in the entire series. Open world RPG, it took the gameplay and the framework of Odyssey and it took the player to Norway, finally letting us be a Viking. The developers made a conscious effort to correct the mistakes of Odyssey while still telling a great story and giving the player tons of awesome content. Personally, I thought they succeeded with Flying Colors. The visuals were amazing, the gameplay super addictive, finding the perfect gameplay loop that's grindy yet satisfying, that's not easy. Now the Assassin's Creed is rumored to be returning to smaller scale conflicts and uh, Valhalla may be the last open world AC game for a while. So I mean, if you're gonna go out, go out in style. Returnal. A roguelike third-person shooter developed by House Marquee, and it pulls elements from not only psychological horror genres, but also sci-fi. It's a very interesting world and engaging gameplay loop that should keep you grinding for hours. Death is permanent in Returnal, so you have to be really smart about how you're playing and whether or not you have the proper resources to dive into a new area. Now, the game was criticized at launch because of technical issues, which happen with every game now, but reviews of the gameplay were largely positive and it deserves them. It may not have had the crazy sales like God of War, but it's a solid PS5 exclusive that showed off what kind of crazy visuals and smooth as butter gameplay are possible on this console. Plus, it's a really solid roguelike game, so if you're into permadeath games, Returnal will be pretty satisfying. Ghostwire Tokyo. I've mentioned this game before but it's one of the most unique titles to come out in 2022, and it's kind of upsetting that it's flown under the radar to the extent it has. It's an action-adventure game published by Bethesda, of all people, that features a super unique art style. It has a really cool story, and that gameplay loop, it's addicting. The game was critically acclaimed, but strangely didn't hit the same mainstream levels of success that Bethesda titles usually do, so I'm going to give this one a big recommendation. It's a fantastic single-player game. It's worth your time, and uh, yes... It's on the PS5. This next one, uh, I'm on the fence. Death Stranding, the director's cut. The game is really difficult to describe, and in a way, I guess that's part of why it didn't do well at first. Basically, an open-world exploration delivery action thriller directed by a guy who really loved being super indirect with his storytelling. There. I did it. Now, a lot of people initially wrote Death Stranding off, myself included, as this weird experiment. A dedicated group of players, though, they fall in love. It's a very niche game. It will either bore you to tears, or it'll make you never want to stop playing, and there's something special about that. It's not every day that people are so incredibly split on the gameplay of a game, but Death Stranding really has attached itself to certain people, and I can respect that. It just didn't attach itself to me. The Director's Cut launched on PC in 2020 and the PS5 in 2021, and it's worth trying out if you want to see uh, what Kojima's been up to since splitting with the Metal Gear Solid franchise. If nothing else, it's cool to see the director get to fully realize his vision for a game without needing to change things for the sake of appealing to a wider audience. Maybe more creative-driven AAA games? Maybe. At number 10, 
Resident Evil Village, also known as RE8. It's kind of a spiritual successor to the legendary RE4, but it also carried on the foundation of RE7. Holding on to the main character in the first-person gameplay of the last one, Village features some absolutely terrifying monsters and some really good interesting plot points that tie things into the larger Resident Evil canon in kind of a cheesy but satisfying way. It's not quite as scary as RE7, but it's not really trying to be. The gameplay loop is more about exploration and discovery, again, like Resident Evil 4, but you can't fall asleep at the wheel because there's some really good scares in there. I've said before, Village was an upper tier in terms of Resident Evil games, and I stand by that. I'm excited to see RE9 and Resident Evil 4 the remake. Horizon Forbidden West. After Dawn was such the smash it was in 2017, a sequel was inevitable. We waited five years for Forbidden West, and while it wasn't the crazy runaway success the first one was, still a great open action world game with an interesting story, and the game is beautiful. And it was a great gameplay progression from the original, and it featured a really engaging story that helped flesh out the universe that Guerrilla Games clearly cares a lot about. Now, whether you prefer the first game or the second, it's personal preference. I think it's a really good open world game, and yep, PS5. How about one of the most recent? Stray, a cat. Surprise hit, right? Often simply referred to as the cat game, you play as a feline, wandering the streets, exploring new areas, hunting for secrets with your little drone companion. It's hard to explain what makes Stray so addicting, but it's one of the hardest games to put down and stop playing. There's something relaxing about it. Maybe it's the ambiance, maybe it's the gameplay itself, but whatever it is, it's welcome to stay. Stray is a fantastic adventure game, and it's a very unique experience, which those are getting harder and harder to come by in modern video game times. Now, a breath of fresh air, I recommend it. Spider-Man Miles Morales. The standalone sequel to the 2018 masterpiece was one of the first big party Sony games to drop on the PS5 and it kicked things off, it did. The game was criticized as being slightly less interesting than the original games, but and not quite as original, but it doesn't change the fact the game plays some of the best on the market. You swing around New York, feels better, new features, it's smooth, all the suits that came with Miles. I mean, Miles Morales plays as a great mini sequel to the 2018 Spider-Man, but it's also great as a standalone adventure and it's worth picking up if you're in the mood for a superhero game. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. The long-awaited return of Ratchet and Clank. It was fun, arguably worth the five years to a lot of people. Plays similarly to the classic Ratchet and Clank games, but with a few twists like multiple playable characters and interdimensional portals that they definitely deepen the gameplay. It released on June 11th of 2021 and still is one of the best PS5 exclusives to date. It's perfectly encapsulating the awesomeness of the original PS2 games while expertly updating the gameplay for modern audience without losing the identity. That's not easy to do. And the writing was top-notch, as usual, for a Ratchet and Clank game. If you're a fan of 3D platformers, you're going to love it. Deathloop. Now, it caused a lot of unnecessary controversy prior to launch because of Microsoft's purchase of Bethesda, but I don't know why. I mean, what's wrong with more people getting to play a great game? They're nothing. I mean, it's basically if you took Groundhog's Day and gave everybody guns. It's awesome. You're an assassin stuck in a time loop and you have to complete a series of combat encounters and assassinations perfectly because if you die, you'll be sent all the way back to the beginning of the level. The art style was unique. The gameplay was some of the most addicting first-person shooting gameplay I've ever played, which shouldn't come as a shock since it was developed by Arcane. Deathloop is coming to the Xbox Series X at some point, but if you're a PS5 owner... Go pick it up. It's seriously one of the coolest FPS games I've played in a long time. Ghost of Tsushima, the director's cut. Developed by Sucker Punch. Massive jump in size, massive jump in tone from the infamous games. I mean, the open world samurai game, the visuals, the atmosphere, the beautiful combat, the vistas. This game is gorgeous. Some people criticized it for being rather formulaic as an open world game, but the combat is super unique and the setting and presentation are enough to set it apart from anything else on the market. The original game launched for the PS4 in 2020, while the director's cut dropped on the PS5 the next year. I mean, it's it, we're going to get a sequel. You know we are. And the director's cut added gameplay features, improved graphical capabilities, short load times. I mean, it's definitely the way to experience Ghost of Tsushima, and it's worth a pickup if you have a PS5. This is one of the best-looking games ever, if you ask me. Spider-Man Remastered. 2018 Spider-Man was a masterpiece. Masterpiece of an open-world superhero game, and after the Arkham series concluded... We needed it. Developed by Insomniac, this Marvel adventure perfectly adapted the source material while telling a new story and featuring arguably the best gameplay ever put in a Spider-Man game. A couple years after launch, remastered, PS5, we got it all. Improved visuals, all the original game's DLC, and a number of new Spidey suits. 
It's definitely the way to experience the game, and the PS5 runs it as smooth as butter. I'm excited. I'm excited for Spider-Man 2. I know everybody else is in the world as well. Two left. Demon Souls the Remake. Now, the Dark Souls franchise kicked off with a little game called Demon Souls, and while the later games in the series got super famous, the world forgot about where it started. Following the success of the Dark Souls game, Sony decided to throw some money down for a remake of the original game and make it a system seller for the PS5. Did it pay off? Yeah! I mean, Demon's Souls is rather basic and somewhat janky compared to the later Soulsborne games. It's still an amazing experience if you really tell where everything in the later games came from. The world is amazing, the combat is amazing, the visuals are breathtaking and amazing. It's a really good game, it's amazing. And at number one today has to be Elden Ring. Might be a little unfair to put a multi-platform game at number one on a list like this, but it's that good. The latest action RPG developed by From Software it takes the gameplay skeleton of Dark Souls and Bloodborne and it cranks everything up to a ridiculous degree. The world is bigger, the multiplayer elements are deeper, the combat is layered, the controls are more intuitive. The whole thing comes with that iconic Soulsborne tone that From Software is good at creating. Elden Ring is a masterpiece of an open world game and an action RPG and I honestly don't think you get much better on the PS5 right now. Yes, God of War may be great and the sequel may be on its way, but Elden Ring is just something else entirely. Everybody should try it out once. And there you have it. Those are the best PS5 games right now as of August 2022. Let me know which one you're playing and I'll see you soon.